Thank you, Chairman McCall and other members of Congress who are respectful enough to be here today. My name is Mark Schmitz from Wentzville, Missouri. I'm the Gold Star father of Marine Lance Corporal Jared Schmitz, who was killed at the age of 20 at the Abbey Gate in Kabul, Afghanistan on August 26, 2021. I identify as a father, a husband, a pissed off, fed up American patriot, and now thanks to this administration, a Gold Star dad, a title no one ever wants to have. From the age of three, Jared has always dreamed of being a Marine. Once he made it into his sophomore year of high school, he was hard set on becoming a Marine, his next move after graduation. Little did he know, or I know, that would end up being his final major decision in his life. 2021 rolls around quickly. He says he's getting to come home to see us and his brothers and sisters because he's finally getting to go home on his first deployment to Jordan. I could see the excitement and nerves in his eyes similar to when he left for boot camp. The unknown could always be a scary thing, but the thrill to see the world also drove the excitement. He felt like he was finally getting the chance to make a difference. He felt by becoming a Marine, he would make that difference a reality. To know Jared meant you knew he always looked out for the little guy. He was the type of young man who looked out for everyone, especially those not capable of looking out for themselves. While in Jordan, he trained with his fellow Marines as they honed their skills to perfection. He earned the right to shoot and train with the designated marksman, so I again reminded him of the opportunity that he could be a sniper someday. He says, nah, Dad, too much math. <laughs> Little did we know at that time that a sniper of all people would be the first and biggest asset that we would meet later on named Tyler Vargas Andrews. Thank you again, sir, for being here. Jared reached out to me in mid-August and said they were sending him somewhere he couldn't talk about. I knew it had to be Afghanistan. We followed the news back home about what was going on and knew that it had to be the place. Ever since Biden decided to ignore all reliable intelligence from his top advisors and close Bagram Air Force Base, uh, anyway, in July, uh, July 1, 2021, which directly and immediately led to the Taliban's taking back most of Afghanistan that our warriors previous had fought so hard to control. We knew somehow Jared and his Marine brothers would end up, th would end up there having to help clean up this mess that never should have been created in the first place. After landing in Afghanistan, a few days went by before I heard from him. When he finally had a chance to call, he told me he, has, he was at the Abbey Gate. He said he thought he was going to die there those first couple of days due to the absolute chaos. He said, Dad, the look on these people's faces was that of utter human desperation, and there's no way that we can save them all. He said he was exhausted and needed to get some rest before going back on the post. He told me they were shifting his post and he would be heading out on the airstrip. That never happened. The next day, the explosion happened. The next day, my son was gone forever. Fortunately, I was able to tell him I loved him one last time. Jared would have made a wonderful husband, a father. He wanted to go into law enforcement after the Marine Corps, but changed his mind after seeing how our police had been tr being treated the first year of Biden's administration. He had mentioned taking over the family business someday, and that couldn't have made me happier. All these things have been stripped from us now, and none of them will happen. He will never have the sun shine on his face again. He will never have the chance to get married. He will never experience the joy of being a father and he would have been one hell of a dad. We will never meet our grandkids. Our family name died that day. Two years has gone by and where are we? To be frank, we're knee deep in bullshit is where we are. Everyone who held a key position in the military still has that position or has been promoted. John Kirby still sits on his perch which apparently faces the opposite direction from where all the action was. Lincoln continues to delay key evidence by ignoring delay or delaying subpoenas. 
Not a single general slapped down their stars, which should have happened two years ago when Biden ignored his reliable intelligence. Not a single person has been held accountable. Our so-called leader can't seem to even utter their names in public, not even once. Mr. Biden has run his entire political campaign for 50 years as the family man. Well, I've got news for you, sir. The curtain has been lifting, and that campaign slogan will never work again. We have seen what's going on in your family, and even worse, we've seen how you've been treating us as Gold Star families. And there couldn't be anything more disgusting and cowardly than the way you have treated us. You are a disgrace to this nation. You have no business having ultimate command over our military, and I regret not saying that to your face when I had the opportunity in Dover. I felt it more, light, more important to bite my tongue, but I also had more important things on my mind at that time, like receiving my son's lifeless body stateside. While I stood there on the tarmac, watching you check your watch over and over again, all I wanted to do was shout out, it's too fucking 30, asshole. But out of respect to the other grieving families, I bit my tongue once again. Well, as you could probably tell by now, I'm done biting my tongue. You, sir, stole their lives, their futures, their dreams, and have ripped apart 13 families. You cannot even man up and admit that. You, sir, gave us all the title Gold Star Family. You, sir, discredit honor and integrity. Two years later, there are things I find myself thinking about. Where and what was Biden's logic sneaking out of Bagram in the middle of the night before ever getting a single Afghan partner or American civilian out? <clears throat> this is the purest definition of intel inter intentional negligence. This is just one of many irresponsible and negligent decisions coming from the White House. In addition, leaving behind billions of dollars of our finest military hardware has led to the biggest international free black market, free market in history. Unfortunately, this will undoubtedly lead to more American military lives lost in the future. Between what has happened, been happening here domestically, for example, the border over the last two and a half years, and all your failed foreign policy decisions, I would venture a guess that you have more American blood on your hands, Mr. Biden, than any president in U.S. history. While in Florida, I was approached by a CIA operative who connected me with several more operatives on a secure phone call. I was told if the Pentagon, DOD, and state or state tries to tell you that they had no idea Afghanistan would collapse so fast after a withdrawal, they are completely and utterly full of shit. They kept telling me to follow Bagram, so I did, and so I have. Closing Bagram was the sole responsibility of Joe Biden. It was also the lead domino which led to the demise of all of Afghanistan its women, its children, 170 Afghans, 13 American servicemen, and for what? Intelligence given to Joe demonstrated Bagram, hands down, was the most effective and, and secure place to undertake a mass evacuation. But you chose to ignore all of that. Instead, you chose H. Kaya, a public airport surrounded by a chain link fence in an urban environment without even a usable air traffic control tower. One thing I do know, though, Mr. President, China certainly is enjoying our fortress, known as Bagram now. I'm often asked what accountability looks like. Simply put, what is most important to me is that the history books are written accurately and honestly and truthfully. <clears throat> About what happened to our, the, to our fallen 13, the fall of Kabul, and for the truth to be told about those who failed to perform their duties should be identified and should be held appropriately accountable. Lastly, I have prepared a short list of answers I will not stop fighting for as a bare minimum for the unnecessary and avoidable sacrificial offering of our 13 brave children on August 26, 2021. I'm requesting that Chairman McCall of the Foreign Affairs Committee subpoena the Inspector's General Office to review the complaints that were filed prior to the bombing of Abbey Gate and why those complaints went disregarded and who failed to follow up on them. I'm requesting an investigation of President Joe Biden, Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin, 
Secretary of State Anthony Blinken as it pertains to Article 3, Sections 2 and 3 of the United States Constitution for their involvement in intentionally leaving Bagram and all of its assets by knowingly aiding known terrorists all while abandoning U.S. civilians and allied partners. I'm requesting Chairman McCall to subpoena whoever has the stills and video footage from the Abbey Gate surveillance cameras, the sniper tower rifle scope SD cards, any drones that were flying that day as well as all SD cards seized from cameras worn by our military on the ground that day at Abbey Gate and any other surveillance equipment used, not already mentioned, so that the committee can see for themselves exactly what happened over there. And finally, answers to the questions from Tyler's entire testimony. Why did NCIS or FBI never interview him? He was easy to find a wall to read. How could you send Pentagon officials to Gold Star Family Living Rooms to present your inclusive investigative reports? How could a thorough investigation possibly even exist when key witnesses to the events were never even interviewed, including not a single Afghan or the sniper who could have ended it all before it even started? How could it just be acceptable that our snipers cannot get an immediate and straight answer from their commanding officer at such a crucial moment? This bombing did not come out of thin air. We had intel, the bomber was in the area. Lieutenant Colonel Whited and generals on the ground were aware of this and did absolutely nothing to prepare our sniper teams, which relied on their leadership. In closing, Mr. Biden and Secretary Austin, Secretary Blinken, if trusting and supporting our military is too difficult for you, then I suggest you pack your shit and enjoy your retirement because from where I sit on my perch, the noose around your double down notion that this was an extraordinary success looks like it's tightening a little bit more each and every day. Thank you. Thank <clears throat> you.